everybody. Today's topic of conversation is things that you should really know about starting your own business. So today we're really going to get into some nitty gritty things that you should definitely be aware of and just kind of be a part of your thought process before you really take that jump or in your preparation process, especially for those young professionals that are out there. Um, you should really just be taking some real time to consider you know, what is the preparation? What's the learning? What's the education? Not just education, by the way, um, when it comes to, you know, going to school or getting a degree, but like, what's that real life education in terms of job experience that you should have and be learning from before you consider um, starting your own business, start, starting your own company. So let's think about this a little bit. Like what makes the world go round? And that you know, Angela's deep thoughts and and it always comes from like real life experiences and real life conversations. And in a recent meeting where we were helping other people with starting a new business um, and talking about like, what is it that they need to do to help grow their business? I really came to like a pretty sharp realization um, and how critical it is that every, in the diversity, so that individual uniqueness and how critical that is um, and what helps make the world go round and help what creates the needs and the wants in society and how human beings interact with each other. Um, so I wanna just kind of identify that, that, you know, in order for a business to be successful, you need to have that unique mix of personalities. But I will say that there is a pretty specific characteristic, I believe, that does need to exist in someone who wants to start their own business. And if it's not you, then somebody that you actively choose to participate in starting that business with you, who's either a partner to you or is in, you know, in a, in a senior leadership type of role with you in your business. Because if you would not describe yourself as the words I'm about to use, um, then you would really want to take a little bit of a step back and go, who is it that I can take along with me on this journey of starting up my own business that does meet these characteristic qualities? Um, so again, I preface this by saying the need for diversity within business and really in every aspect of life is critical, but there is some distinct characteristics for a business owner that I do wholeheartedly after 11 years of running my own company and not just one company, but as a serial entrepreneur and having several businesses, um, I believe is absolutely critical. Um, and so I'll, pre I'll once again preface the description of this characteristic is saying there are a lot of people, um, you know, when you think of the needs in business, there's a need for leaders and there's also a need for followers. And I find it interesting because there's definitely a lot of people who take offense to be called a follower as if it were a derogatory term. Um, but for me, I tend to be pretty direct in my communication. So for me, it's just a simple word of fact in terms of a definition. Um, the other part is to recognize that not everyone is cut out to be a leader or a manager or a trainer, um, that it really is their, your individual personality or nature um, sometimes just doesn't possess the qualities to lead or the interest, quite frankly, to lead. Um, and so one characteristic I really, really, truly believe that is needed and also ironically often considered to be a derogatory term or word is aggressive, right? So a lot of times you'll, you'll hear this, you know, again, hey, this person's really aggressive. And I think the intention of using that word to describe someone is there for the reason to be like almost derogatory. But again, I tend to be pretty literal in my language. So I have never taken offense to that when someone's described me in that way. Um, but across the board, needing to be aggressive, assertive, direct, relentless, it's all necessary in order to not only start a business, but to grow it and to keep it going. Quite frankly, it's absolutely unavoidable. And you have to have the confidence to know that you have a right to hope those who claim to love and care about you genuinely want what's best for you, including your success in business. So the idea that those who are in your network, whether it's friends or family or colleagues or you know any other relationships that you might have, um, the, you have to be someone with a character that isn't worried about somehow like causing damage or you know uh, offending a relationship somehow, somehow by thinking, hey, this person in my life should want what's best for me, which includes supporting me and taking on a huge risk and a huge challenge like starting up my own business. Um, be aware of is I recently Googled what is the failure rate of small businesses in the US? And this is what I found. According to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics as reported on Fundera, approximately 20% of all small businesses fail within the first year. By the end of the second year, an additional 30% of small businesses will have failed. And by the end of the fifth year, about half will have failed. Um, so keep in mind, that's just the folks who actually even have the courage to attempt it. 
So the failure rate of a small business is is pretty shockingly high, right? And so it really, you can't help but kind of wonder like what differentiates those businesses from the, those that succeed long-term versus those that fail in the short term. And I've definitely obviously put in a lot of thought about this during uh, you know my journey as a business owner myself over the last 11 years. And also somebody who's become even more passionate about helping small business owners succeed in whatever business that they have. Um, so much so to the point that it's actually driven a new division of my company, which is called um, Antony Innovative Applications. So we're actually uh, doing applications that specifically support small businesses in how to operate and, and function in their business, whether it's hiring, whether it's finance, whether it's workforce management. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I've just become extremely passionate about, especially during the pandemic when so many casualties were small businesses during, you know, especially the shutdown period of time. Um, so, you know, while I've been thinking about this, I've come, I've really thought about a lot of character qualities um, and not necessarily qualities that someone can learn or become in a short period of time. It's really about someone who um, either possessed them already and then also has been tested over and over and over again. Um, in order to say, hey, these are the character qualities that, again, just in my opinion, I believe you would need to possess to be a successful long-term small business owner. Um, first on my list is fortitude and resilience. So someone, when you get kicked, you get up and you say thank you for the learning opportunity. You don't take a personal offense or attack about it. You don't see this as you know somehow you're a failure in everything in life. When you get rejected, you're somebody who says, thank you, can I have another? Um, so that's somebody who's got tremendous fortitude and resilience is definitely a huge and critical character quality. The other is patience and patience specifically, what I mean by that is that recognize that things take time, but you as the business owner never slow down. So even though you have patience for others, you have patience for the people you hire and you train, you have patience for what has to happen with you know clients or potential clients, or you know, potential sales, all of those things definitely require time, but you individually, you never slow down. Um, the other big character quality, in my opinion, is you have to be an optimist. You know, If you're someone who loses faith in humanity on a regular basis, or you just see things as the glass is half empty, you're never gonna successfully work, sell, hire, or train other humans. Um, so you really need to make sure you're somebody who is kind of like this never ending optimist when it comes to humanity. The other big part is confidence, and I'm talking genuine confidence. That isn't dependent on anyone else. So your confidence comes exclusively from you and internally. It doesn't matter what the opinions are. You don't take time. You don't invest time or thought into what other people think of you. The people who you do get seek advice from and feedback from are people who you know really are your, the people who care about you, not strangers or your neighbors, but like really people who uh, have a meaningful impact on your life. Um, you also have to be extremely vision and goal oriented. So this means your mind is constantly thinking and rethinking and staying open to how to do more and how to do it better. So you're never complacent. You're never just standing still. You see standing still as going backwards. So you're in a constant state of vision and goal orientation. Another way to put that is you're the people that have like gerbils constantly running around in your, your head. You probably have a hard time falling asleep at night unless you're completely exhausted. That's another character quality. Um, the other character quality is a super high emotional IQ. And what I mean by that is someone who uses accurate emotions, not being emotionless, not being numb or you know feeling nothing, but somebody who uses accurate emotions, especially in business. And also to recognize that when it comes to business, the balance will normally be something in the range of about 80% of the time is facts and logic based, and the other 20% is, is accurate emotion based. Um, so what drives your decisions, what drives what you do on a daily basis really should be, again, facts and logic, but never overlooking the importance of human nature and human beings and how we treat one another. Um, and then most of all, as I mentioned already earlier in this video, is to be aggressive and to be assertive. I, I'm hearing like the be aggressive uh, cheer in the back of my head right now, of course. But um, and so what does this mean? It means no fear, no apprehension, no guilt, all of those useless negative emotions are not a part of who you need to be as a business owner. You know what you're deserving of and you persistently go for it. You work and you fight for yourself as much as you would fight for the person you love most in the world. And that's how you are all of the time. Your motivations and your interests are constantly focused and they're really there to, to push you forward. Even in the face of adversity, in the face of rejection, in the face of failure, it doesn't matter. You're still pushing forward and you're still going for it. 
Um, really, at the end of the day, and, I, and again, I know that this is going to come across harsh because why? I'm assertive and aggressive <laughs> as a serial entrepreneur that I am. But at the end of the day, there's really no space in the business world for passive people. There's not space in the, in the business world for passive behaviors. There just isn't. Words like waiting, words like going back and repeating bad decisions are your business's death. And you have to be prepared to sacrifice. And those in your life who surround you every day or week must also be prepared to support that sacrifice. You know, personally, I didn't take a non-working vacation for the first five years when I started this business. Um, and I'm talking even like when I went to India to visit with my husband's family. I didn't, I worked through those when I was in a completely different, I'm talking a nine and a half or a 10 and a half hour time difference. I was still working during those vacations. So there was very real sacrifice there, but there was also tremendous discipline where working from home and operating my businesses from home requires when you're working, you're working, meaning no distractions from family. And when you're not working, you're not working and there's no distractions from business. So there's a lot of discipline and a lot of sacrifice that happens. Um, and you know, the other big part about it is um, you really need to do as much as you can for as long as you can. Like that's a huge tip whenever somebody asks me like what's the biggest tip I would give to somebody starting their own business. And I would say you need to really do as much of the work before you ever consider hiring somebody you want to avoid starting off your business in debt in terms of like having to seek out investor help. Do the work because you're the expert and you should be the expert in that specific area of business. And not only should you be the expert in that specific area of business, but you should also be someone who um, can teach others that way if somebody, um, hold on one second. Hi, I'm in a live, bye. Um, but again, if you're someone who is, you know, starting your own business, you should do every single thing, every single detail, as many of them as you possibly can during especially those years of sacrifice. And until your business is really making an income where you can afford to hire other people to do different things, and when you do hire them, you want it to be someone who, you know, one, can you can train and can learn from you, but can also bring something to level you up in terms of your business, but only when you can afford it. Um, so, you know, again, let me just remind you all these tips that I provided to you, all of the descriptions of character qualities that I share with you. I don't share them with you to discourage you. If you look at it and go, no, I wouldn't really describe myself as an aggressive person or those char character qualities that Angela shared are not really qualities that I would say describe myself. I'm not really sharing that with you to discourage you from starting your own business and taking those risks um, and to, or to stop pr pursuing your entrepreneurial dreams. But I would really encourage you to take some time to really think this through. Be strategic. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take the decisions that you make in your life and in your business lately. Do everything you possibly can in advance of starting your own business to be prepared and to have the tools and the resources that you need, um, including another person who does possess these qual character qualities and you know, when you've got maybe the great idea and you're a great behind the scenes person, so you decide to partner up with somebody else who can bring all of those character qualities that I just described to make sure that your business is ultimately going to be successful. Um, so, you know, I will tell you hands down this decision that I made back in 2012 to not return to corporate America after spending 12 years of the, the school of hard knocks, I'll say after my college education, I spent 12 years in the School of Hard Knocks, which was in corporate America, in a variety of industries, working in HR and recruiting and operations and in sales. That was the most critical time of education, but I have never looked back, not for a second, not on the worst day or week or month or year when it's come to any one of my businesses. Um, it's really something that you can do and no one else is there to blame and no one else is there to take credit. Um, and so just really make sure that this is the right path for you. And again, make sure you're surrounding yourself by supportive people. Um, and you know, really at the end of the day, make sure it's something that you love and it's something that you're passionate about as well. Well, I hope this all helps for, for the folks that are out there that are considering pursuing their own businesses, whether it's now or sometime in the future, or folks who tried to attempt it before and maybe have struggled and haven't been able to find that right formula of success to have a successful business. And you know, uh, feel free to like, share, subscribe, do all the things when it comes to uh, my YouTube channel and also my other social media channels um, and share this information out with other people who you think could benefit from it. Um, look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.